Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm Zach Peterson. I'm a technical consultant with Altium. And today we're gonna to talk about your pinouts for your connectors. Connectors and pinouts are pretty standardized if you're looking at something like a USB cable or an ethernet cord, but there are often times where you, as the PCB designer, have the opportunity to customize your connector pinout. Sometimes if you're doing a board-to-board -board connection, you're using a ribbon cable, there's some other instances where you have the freedom to customize your connector pinout. So how should you do it? Let's take a look. way to learn how to do connector pinouts is actually to look at pin headers. They're a really great example and they're really easy to work with in your uh, PCB design software. Most PCB design software will have a library that includes a pin header con uh, connector and you can just drag it into your schematic and start arranging ports on the pin header. Typically with a pin header you have one or two rows of pins and I'm just going to look at a one row connector right now. And on this connector, let's say we have six possible pins. So pretty standard. Now the question becomes, how should we arrange different signals? Well, let's just say for the moment that we know we have to have power, we need to have a ground connection, and we need to have some IOs. So I think pretty much everybody's uh, intuition is to say, well, we're gonna put you know, power here, we're gonna put some ground here, and we're gonna do IOs all the way down the rest of the way. So for a small pinout connector, this is usually fine. Whether or not you should arrange these in a different way or maybe have multiple ground or multiple power actually depends upon a lot of different factors. Here we're looking at a six pin uh, pin header, but what if we extend this all the way down to let's say uh, 24 pins? Well then how should we arrange everything? So again, it's really all gonna depend on what you need to route through this pin, uh, pin header and what your signal speeds are. And as your pin header gets larger, meaning like physically longer, the speed of your IOs is gonna matter. And also the length of the, the connection that you need to make is gonna matter. So you need to ask yourself, is this pin header gonna be used for a board to board connection? Or am I gonna connect the long ribbon cable to this? and then route that ribbon cable over to another board. So let's first just explore a little bit what happens if I'm using this for a board to board connector. So generally with a board to board connector, if you're just working at low power and you're working at uh, low current, um, you can usually just get away with having one pin for power and maybe one or two pins for ground. It really just depends what's going on on the other side of the board. So maybe over here you need to come off to go to ground to go to a certain set of components and maybe over here you need to come off and go to power for a certain set of components. And in that case, maybe these are also power and ground, but it's for accessibility. You need to think about where things are placed on the receiving board and try and match that up so that it's really easy to route once you get onto the PCB. And you don't wanna make your life more difficult by sticking to some rule that says, hey, I should always put power and ground up here because that can actually back you into a corner on your other board and it can force you to put components in this area and bunch them all together and it'll actually make it more difficult to route. If you're able to use 24 pins, it's okay to spread these things out and actually duplicate them. Now sometimes you have to do power at let's say five volts and sometimes you may have to do it at another level like 3v3. Again, totally appropriate to split them up into different areas like this. It all just depends on what's on the other board and it also depends on what's on this board. So maybe my 3v3 regulator, so maybe I, let's say I have an LDO, and my LDO comes out over here and routes directly to my 3v3. And maybe my buck converter is up here and it's putting out my five volts. And so I can put these two that are closest to the buck converter at five volts, these two that are closest to the LDO at 3v3. So it all kind of depends what's going on. Typically a good strategy just for ex just to be extra cautious and make sure that you are not going to have major problems with noise is put a ground connection here every few pins. So you, maybe you put one here, you've got some more IOs, then you've got your power and ground, then you've got some more IOs, and then another ground. So it's okay to put some ground in here in between these IOs because what that ground is going to do is it's gonna provide some shielding against EMI. Now it's not a ton of shielding, but it helps. 
This becomes a lot more important when we start to consider what happens on a really long ribbon connector and what happens when we're working at high speeds. So a lot of components, as I've said before, you wouldn't normally think of them as like a quote unquote high speed component, but if they're running at about five nanoseconds or less, you might as well consider them high speed. And the reason is that here they can actually emit a lot of radiation depending on this pinout and how large the connector is and how large the, uh, the, the cable is. Okay, so now what I wanna do is look at what happens when you have, say, a two row pin header that's connected to a long cable. And again, the question is, how should we arrange our IOs? So again, most people probably have the intuition to just say, hey, I'm gonna put this first pin as uh, power, I'm gonna put this second pin as ground, and then they're gonna try and interleave all of the different pins and ground together in a certain way. And so when you have this long ribbon connector, you can have a problem when you only have one ground line up here, so I'll draw it in black, but then you start lining up your high-speed IOs down this direction. So let's say I put this IO here, I have another IO here, and I have no ground the entire rest of the pin header all the way down to these IOs. So here you can have a problem in that you actually have a really large loop that gets formed by the current that's being drawn through the IO onto the other board and then being returned through your ground connection. And so if you have high speed uh, signals being routed over this, uh, this uh, ribbon cable, you can have a problem in that you're now generating a lot of noise. So there's a really simple way to solve this problem. All you gotta do is interleave some ground. Put ground here, Maybe you put ground here instead of an I.O. Maybe you just move this I.O. pin over to here so it's coming from the second row instead of the first row, and so on and so forth. So as you get the higher speed I.O.s, you're gonna wanna use more ground interleaved into your connector. And again, it's gonna provide that shielding, and it's also gonna help prevent crosstalk between different signals. Because again, when you're routing over this ribbon connector, all of the different wires in that connector are essentially lined up with each other. And if you put ground in between different IOs, once they get onto the board, you can help, uh, that will help prevent uh, uh, crosstalk between signals coming onto the board and coming through that connector. So there's a really great article on this on Altium's blog. We're gonna link to it in the, in the description. Go ahead and give that a read, and hopefully that'll explain a little bit more about the problem with uh, crosstalk in connector pinouts. Going back to this just for a moment before we wrap up, again, just like we can interleave ground like this in between IOs, if you need to, you know, maybe you make this a power pin. Sometimes you actually need to have multiple power pins uh, coming onto your pin header because, you know, these pins, they all have a current limit. So that current will be limited at say, it's, you know, say, let's say it's one amp, just to, for a low number. If you need to carry more than one amp of current through your, your connector, then you need to split up your power onto multiple pins. So let's just say that this limit here is one amp, and then this limit here is also one amp. The total limit will just be the sum of the two, or two amps. So I can carry one amp through this pin, I can carry one amp through that pin. And if you have two, two pins that you need for power, you need to have at least two pins for ground also. Because remember, that ground is going to carry the return current, that's going to form a closed loop. It also has to carry that one amp and that one amp. So you need at least the same number of ground pins. Preferably more, again, just to provide shielding, especially when you're on these longer ribbon cables. Board to board, probably a little bit easier to get away with simply because you've got the two boards compressed with each other. And when they're very close together, the ground plane from one uh, board can actually shield those components from the ground plane of another board. Having the arrangement like that, noise emitted from one board may not be such a problem from being received on the other board. What you don't want to have happen is let's say uh, crosstalk gets induced somewhere along this cable. And then you have a problem where one board is radiating noise, gets received on the cable, and then gets read out on the other board. So that problem with crosstalk is precisely why telephone wire and ethernet cables use twisted pair. Twisted pair cables provide a lot of shielding and they do that by interleaving the, uh, or by literally twisting the, uh, the cables together, the wires that make up the cable. 
and that gives them a very small loop area so that there's very little loop area to receive crosstalk from some external noise source. So hopefully this illustrates some kind of messy ways, but some different ways you can figure out uh, the, uh, the connector pinout that you want to use. Again, we've, I've, I've drawn up an example here with pin headers, but there's actually tons of different connectors that you can use to do a custom pinout. All these different connectors have different characteristics. Some are actually designed to handle high current, so you may not have just a one amp limit on different pins, could be much higher. Some are designed for high voltage, so, you know, I'm talking about like 5, you know, 5 volt or 3V3 on these different power nets, um, but these could actually be for much higher voltages. It really all depends what you need. Some are even uh, specialized for high frequency. Um, once you get into really high frequencies, you would actually go with coaxial. So you would want to route just the RF over the coax. You could route your digital stuff and your power and ground over, say, a ribbon connector or just a board to board connector. It all depends what you need to do. But there's a lot of connectors out there. If you ever want to find connectors, Go to Octopart, definitely the easiest uh, site to use to find components just like connectors. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Hopefully this gives you some context as to why certain connector pinouts are designed the way they are. And hopefully it helps you figure out how to design your own connector pinout the next time you need to put a pin header or some other connector onto your board. If you want to design your own connector pinouts and you need a good schematic editor and PCB layout editor, go and get Circuit Maker. It's super easy to use, and if you're still learning how to design PCBs, it's a great tool to use to learn the practice and the process of PCB design before you go on to a more advanced program like Altium Designer. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your questions in the comments, check out the links in the description. All right, everybody, thanks again, and uh, don't forget to call your fabricator.